Oscar's behind the door. If I went out now, I wouldn't end up well. These windows open onto a sort of terracing. Going out of the door is out of the question. I guess the windows are the only way out. I don't think these windows are from Mercedes' joint. It's impossible to open them from the outside. This fire escape could be a good way to get out of here. If only this signboard weren't there to stop me from getting there. Beyond this signboard, there are some fire stairs. If I could only find a way to reach them, I could get out of here. The mounting of the sign to the wall doesn't seem to be in too good condition. It's one of the hooks that holds up the neon sign. At this point, the joint seems damaged. I can't think of anything. I could try to lift it with the spearhead. Let's see. I doubt Marzetti will like this. I was never a big athlete, but I don't have a choice. Just like a cat, my muscles contract and my arms work as counterweights as I get ready to jump. A not so young anymore cat with an alcohol problem and lungs full of tar. Now is not a good time to indulge in self-criticism. Ah, you again. Where we go this time? Essex Street, Lower East Side. Whatever you want. Your old man deciphered codes, right? Da. Can you decipher this notebook? Da Nero, deciphering skill isn't something you inherit. I never had my old man's passion for codes, and I never mixed up with his job. So you don't have any idea about how I could read what's written in this notebook? I can tell you that most of the codes used to hide information are based on substitution cipher, also known as Caesar cipher. In fact, the Emperor of Ancient Rome used to code his messages using a cipher based on the shifting of each letter by one or more positions. If you assume that you shift each letter by one, then A would become B, the B would become C, and so on. If you find out what exact number is shift, you get information that you look for. It's easier than I thought. Before you say it, I suggest you try it. Slavonsky, this is the first time since I've met you that I have a reason to think you're more than just a stingy landlord. De Niro, maybe our relationship would change today, but don't think I won't toss you out on your ear if you don't pay rent. And don't you think that I'm going to start taking your threats seriously? It's the notebook I found in the safe at Marzetti's office. I tried to take a peek at it, but it's all mumbo-jumbo. I need to figure out... 
I'll try to use the method that Slavonsky suggested me. Good. Now that I have figured out how the code works, nothing can stop me from sticking my nose into Marzetti's business. Written in this booklet, there are pages and pages of names of people working for Black Lily. Starting from delivery boys and police officers and going all the way up to cardinals and politicians. The more you read, the higher the rank of the mentioned person. I wouldn't be surprised to find God's name at the end of the list. But I don't have to get all the way to the end of the list to find the name that I was looking for, the name that I knew that I was going to find. I just had to get halfway through the booklet to find Leroy Malone's name. Maybe this will be the most idiotic thing that I'll ever do in my life, but nothing will stop me from getting into that department and shoving proof about Marzetti's ties to Black Lily in his face. Hey, you. If you're looking for Lieutenant Malone, you're not lucky at all. He left half an hour ago. Where'd he go? I don't know, but he left this for you. Malone has disappeared. The only thing he left is this piece of paper with a number on it. 555-7589. Five, 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 Let me guess. Uh, we have to go somewhere. Essex Street. Lower East Side. Whatever you want.
New York operator here. How can I help you? Can you dial a number for me? What's the number? Five 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 seven five eight nine. One second. Hello, Malone. Is that you? Del Nero. Oh, I'm happy to see you got my message. Yeah, and I have also found out a couple of interesting things about you. You don't know nothing, Del Nero. You're on Marcetti's payroll. I know that. You think it's enough? So go report me to the head detective. No, wait. Go tell the police chief in person. If you don't know the names, you can find them in that notebook you took from Marcetti. I see you know about the notebook. I was informed about it. Let me guess. You were the one that Marcetti was talking to when he realized that I wasn't just one of the many detectives passing through his joint. Looks like you listened to the telephone call. Yeah. Del Nero, this is too big for you. This isn't some jealous wife who kills her husband or some rich guy knocked off because of a will. Get out of the city. Take the girl with you if you want, but disappear forever. Thanks for the advice, but I intend to get to the bottom of this. Why did you do it? It's certainly not to get justice for your old pal McLean. Could be. After all, he gave his life to protect a kid. I think he deserves it. I didn't take you for such a sentimental guy. Everyone has his defects. Del Nero, if you really want to know what's going on, be at Ellis Island in a half an hour, and I'll tell you everything. Ellis Island? Who's to say it isn't just a trap? No one, but I'm sure you'll be there. You're a guy who's more curious than careful. Ellis Island. Half an hour. Don't be late. You know how to get to Ellis Island? What you want to do at Ellis Island in middle of night? Just answer the question. Of course I know get to Ellis Island. Okay, let's go. Ellis Island. Any immigrant who came to improve his lot in this country knows this island. This is where they put you the first time you set foot in America. As soon as you get off the boat, a guy with an elegant white lab coat visits you. If you don't have health or mental problems, you're allowed to enter the registration room. There, some kind of inspector asks you all kinds of information about you, where you were born, how much money you have, and if you have a criminal record. If you answer correctly to all these questions, welcome. Starting today, you're part of the grand old USA too. The Statue of Liberty. When I got to New York, it was the first thing I saw. A powerful and proud woman with a torch full of hope, shining her light on the entire world. But today, that hope has turned into melancholy. Melancholy for everything we could have become in this country, but didn't. It must be Malone. Hi, Del Nero. Malone. A man was killed at the Melville port tonight by the usual suspects. That's basically what I was supposed to write in the report about the McLean homicide. That's what Black Lily ordered me to do. But something changed their plans. Your friend was able to escape, hide the girl, and call the police. And if that weren't enough, he decided to call you too. He knew that the people who were looking for him wouldn't have had any problems buying the silence of some lieutenant or even of the police chief. So he needed someone he considered to be incorruptible. You. Sean always thought too much of my honesty. Even before escorting you to the department, I had instructions to frame you. You had a history with McLean, and that made things easier for me. 
The point was to keep you here until the men from Black Lily, disguised as forensics, collected everything they needed from the port. A perfect plan. Right. But your friend got involved, paying your bail and pointing you to the trail of the real killers of your former colleague. Even if you were out on bail, I never thought you'd make it all the way to Marsetti. It seems that, as a detective, I'm not a complete washout yet. And it also seems that you are not as honest as the award hanging in the police department affirms with so much pride. Well, that isn't just a simple award, Del Nero. It's a promissory note on my soul. Explain that. I received that award from Mayor Weston for having caught Samuel Cutter, the former boss of Black Lily here in New York. Yes, I know the case. And I'm also smart enough to understand that not everything is as rosy as it seems. Cutter wasn't well seen, and the organization didn't like it. They knew that with the public opinion against them, getting control over the city wouldn't have been as easy as it had been in the past. So they decided to get Cutter and all the people connected to him arrested. At least, that's what they wanted the people to believe in. Actually, the only ones who ended up in the slammer were simple collaborators and a few small-time crooks. In some cases, even regular folks who for some reason had a debt with them. Patrick Olson. Well, he was one of the many. Malone, why are you telling me this story? Because you are my only chance at redemption, Del Nero, at least in part for everything I've done over the years. Do you think that by letting me live, I'll destroy an organization like Black Lily? Malone, I'm a private detective, not a superhero in a kid's comic book. Well, I'm not expecting anything from you, Del Nero. But given how the organization is persisting on looking for the girl, I guess she's got to be pretty important to them. And if they can't find her, maybe something might change. They'll get rid of you as soon as they figure out what you're doing. If that's how things are supposed to go, let them. What are you planning to do now? Nothing. I'll just wait and see what happens. And there's no better place to do that than in front of a huge statue that symbolizes justice. Whatever you want. Well, good luck, Del Nero. May destiny smile on you. I don't believe in destiny, Malone. I'm sure. I leave him alone with his thoughts and go away. Maybe his advice to get a change of scene isn't as bad as it seems. Maybe that's what I should do. I should disappear. All of a sudden, a hiss interrupts my thoughts, and then, silence again, a silence full of death. Malone crumples over as if he were without a skeleton, a limp body that hits the floor. Then a second hiss, a sharp pain in my neck. I fall on my knees. My muscles aren't responding to me. Anesthetic. My vision starts to get cloudy. I fall into darkness. I hate people who are late, and the guy that I'm waiting for should have been here more than an hour ago. I can't stand it. I can't stand any of the reasons why people are late. Whether they didn't plan their time properly, had a problem, or even worse, know that the person who's waiting for them doesn't have a choice. The man that should have been here an hour ago has documents that I need to have if I want to leave this state with the girl. Without those, I would have to stay in this dump for who knows how long. All of a sudden, the joint's door starts to creak. Someone's coming in. A horrible stench of cologne fills me nostrils. It's him. It's Smiley. He sits down at the bar and starts talking like we were old friends. I cut him short and I ask him if he has what I need. He puts the documents on the table, a nautical passport and a permit to let the girl get on board. He tells me that the passport is missing the photograph and that I'll have to get one myself. Then he takes a napkin and writes a name. Saint Marie de la Mer. This is the name of the ship that I have to take to leave New York. Getting on a mercantile ship pretending to be a sailor is the only way that I have found to leave the state. And according to what Smiley says, I'll have to get to Brooklyn to do so. I expressly asked to set sail from Newark, but Smiley doesn't seem to have understood. I'm grasped by an incredible desire to punch him in the face, but it's not the time. I give Smiley the money. Fifty bucks. Too much for false documents, but not that excessive considering that they are the only way to save me life. After taking the money, Smiley sputters something that sounds like good luck and leaves. Taken within the stench of his cologne, dabbed on in the hope of hiding the chemical stench of the crap he works with all day. 
Ridiculous. The guy that I almost put in the slammer a few years back for forging documents is now the same guy from whom I'm buying me freedom. Destiny is a strange thing. These are the documents that Smiley brought me. Better take them. John Fard? That idiot Smiley used the first name he thought of to falsify these documents. Knowing him, I should have checked them out before giving him the money. But apart from breaking his nose, there isn't much I could have done. I need to leave this state as soon as possible. And I definitely don't have time to redo the documents considering that I need a photograph for them to be useful. I'm in the middle of nowhere with a stolen car and a girl that I don't even know. What a great situation. No, better let her sleep. A metal ashtray. That could be helpful. I don't have any idea what I could do with it, but I'll take it anyway. Ketchup, napkins, and various condiments. Everything that you need to give flavor to the swill they serve in this place. I don't need it. Bottles of whiskey and gin, and not the best on the market. If I want a drink, I have me rye with me. By looking at the cables, I'd say that it must be the electric panel. If I get near it, that yokel owner wouldn't think twice about pumping me full of lead. Jefferson Davis, Alexander Stevens, and other guys who a few decades ago wanted America's cessation. Fantastic. All I needed was secessionist nostalgia. I bet that if I looked up the word yokel in the dictionary, I'd find a photograph of this guy. A photograph of a farm and a horse. Nothing strange for a country cafe. It's a cash register. Confederate flag. I hate Confederates. I'm not going to touch it. A spittoon. Interesting metaphor for this place. I hate people who spit. I bet that if I looked up the word yokel in the... What do you want, stranger? Is this your place? Yes. And the rifle I keep in my hands as well. I see that there's a warm welcome in this house. My friend, this place sees mostly farmers and truck drivers. And I don't like you, your little friend, and that guy who came in a while ago. I'm just passing through. I hope it. City slickers don't do well here. I have to go. Okay. Open 24 hours a day. I guess that's the only reason to go to a place like this. What a crazy idea. There are booze signs, but I don't recognize any of the brands. Ten cents for a gallon of gas and eight for one of kerosene. Only in the countryside can you still find kerosene stations. Nowadays, it's only tractors that still use that type of fuel. Mars Gas Station. If it weren't the only gas station open at this hour, I'd definitely have blown right past. I don't like this place. It's the car I used to get here. Considering who I stole it from, I don't think it'll be reported as stolen. Before I go back to New York, I need to figure out the problem of the photograph and the documents. How special. Lard with beans. I guess I couldn't expect champagne and caviar in these parts.
The sign in front of the station says gas. I don't need any, the car's full. The sign in front of the station said kerosene. If I filled up the car with kerosene, I wouldn't go a foot before the engine burst. One of the gas pumps is leaking. The pail is used to catch the leaking gas. What should I use with it? An oil lamp. It's the wick. The gas cap. The glass cover is missing. That makes this lamp practically useless. Essex County, New Jersey. I've come a long way. Hmm, it's a sort of photographic set. There are some wires running under the platform. This stuff probably needs to be plugged in. It doesn't work. I don't think it's plugged in. A cornfield. It's in bad shape. Most of the plants are dry or rotten. I'll take a few kernels of corn. I took the only kernels that aren't rotten. It's a rain tank. An oil lamp. It's better to hook it up to the lamp. The gas cap. The tank's empty. I bet that if I looked up the word yokel in the... You again, stranger? Is that cornfield back there yours? Did the Winchester send you? No one sends me. Who are the Winchesters? Sons of bitches who bought the farm back there a few months ago. You don't seem to like them that much. Nah, they're good for nothing. You just have to look at how they keep their farm. The only thing they know how to do is drink and smoke on the porch. And why should they send someone to ask questions? Because the other night I shot one of them in the ass. Those bastards, after dusk, they come to the back of my gas pump and they start playing with their guns. They shoot at whatever they see. I warned them that even if one of those bullets touched my pumps, the whole place is gonna blow up, but they didn't listen. So the other night, as soon as I heard them shooting, I went out and I shot one of them in the ass. And that idiot ran away yelling like a little girl. <laughs> Good story. Stranger, this isn't a big city. This is how we take care of things around here. And the same goes for you. Give me crap and I'll turn your city ass into a calendar. Just point your gun at me once and I'll show you the difference between your old piece and my revolver. Huh. How does this camera out here work? What do you want to know? When I'm not talking to yokels, I dabble in photography. Huh. So, does that thing outside work or not? No. I only use it when the Bunyan Derby goes by. Bunyan Derby? What the hell is that? 
Every March the 3rd, a marathon comes by from Los Angeles. About 200 idiots for three months trudge along Route 66 to New York. When they go by, they all want a photograph to remember their achievement. So I bought that thing there. I have to go. Okay.